Snake, are you all right? I've been better. What about Eva? I healed her up. She can manage. Good. Snake, stay on your toes. The enemy hasn't given up coming after you yet. They should be there any minute now. If you go southeast from there, you'll come to a road leading to the lake. Take Eva with you and head southeast. Can I have seconds?
Snake, the lake is just over that cliff. Eva should be able to climb it if you help her. Keep her close to you.
you go. Not bad at all. Well, not bad at all. I can walk. Come on, Snake. We made it. We made it. Over there. It's the boss, isn't it? I'll go get the wig ready to take off. Right. I'll leave you two alone, but come back in one piece, okay? Promise me! Life's end. Isn't it beautiful? It's almost tragic. When life ends, it gives off a final lingering aroma. Light is but a farewell gift from the darkness to those on their way to die. I've been waiting, Snake, for a long time. Waiting for your birth, your growth, and the finality of today. Boss, why are you doing this? Why? To make the world one again. The world used to be whole. But with the end of the Second World War, the philosophers began to fight amongst themselves, and the world was torn apart. The Cobras, my comrades, who trained and fought alongside me, were torn apart as well. The foibles of politics and the march of time can turn friends into enemies just as easily as the wind changes. Ridiculous, isn't it? Yesterday's ally becomes today's opposition. And this Cold War? 
Think back. When I was leading the Cobras, America and Russia were fighting together. Now, consider whether America and Russia will still be enemies in the 21st century. Somehow I doubt it. Enemies change along with the times, the flow of the ages, and we soldiers are forced to play along. I didn't raise you and shape you into the man you are today just so we could face each other in battle. A soldier's skills aren't meant to be used to hurt friends. So then what is an enemy? Is there such a thing as an absolute timeless enemy? There is no such thing, and never has been. And the reason is that our enemies are human beings like us. They can only be our enemies in relative terms. The world must be made whole again. The philosophers must be reunited. I will devote my skills to that purpose. And with the Colonel's money, I will achieve that end. Just as I once created the Cobras. They are my family. I may no longer be able to bear children, but I still have a family. It was November 1st, 1951. I was in the Nevada desert participating in atomic testing. The name Nevada is derived from Spanish, covered in snow, white as snow. And snow is exactly what I saw in that Nevada desert. It froze my blood white. Snake, you were an atomic test subject, weren't you? On Bikini Atoll. That's part of the reason I was drawn to you. You and I are alike. We're both slowly being eaten away by the karma of others. We'll never have the chance to die peacefully of old age. We have no tomorrow. But we can still have hope for the future. In 1960, I saw a vision of the ideal future from space. Three years earlier, the Soviet Union had succeeded in launching Sputnik, the first man-made satellite in history, into orbit. This came as a huge shock to the United States. In response, America threw everything it had into its own manned spaceflight project, the Mercury Program. Even as the Soviets seemed poised to send their first man into space, America was still experimenting with chimpanzees and rockets. The government wanted human data. So they secretly decided to send a human being into space. I was the one they chose. At the time, they didn't have the technology to block out cosmic rays, and whoever they sent up would inevitably be exposed to heavy radiation. That's why they chose me. After all, I'd already been irradiated once. Of course, you won't find any of this in the history books. I could see the planet as it appeared from space. That's when it finally hit me. Space exploration is nothing but another game in the power struggle between the US and the USSR. Politics, economics, the arms race, they're all just arenas for meaningless competition. I'm sure you can see that, but the Earth itself has no boundaries. No East, no West, no Cold War. And the irony of it is, the United States and the Soviet Union are spending billions on their space programs and the missile race, only to arrive at the same conclusion. In the 21st century, everyone will be able to see that we are all just inhabitants of a little celestial body called Earth. A world without communism or capitalism, that is the world I wanted to see. But reality continued to betray me. 
In 1961, I was sent to Cuba, to Bahia de Cuchinos. It was part of a CIA-sponsored invasion under the guise of taking Cuban exiles back to their country. But the U.S. government betrayed them. Our weak-kneed president held back their air support. Defenseless, the exiles were annihilated by the Cuban army. All I could do was watch in silence. I was set up by the very country I'd sacrificed so much for, by the very government I dedicated my life to defending. I was driven from the surface world, and I went underground. Then, two years ago, I faced the sorrow, my old comrade in battle. He was my friend. But one of us had to die. I was left with no choice. The sorrow gave his life for me. There is no enmity between us. One must live and one must die. That was the mission. The ones who gave me that mission were the philosophers. Early in the 20th century, the true holders of power in the United States, the Republic of China, and the newly formed Soviet Union, gathered together in a secret meeting that would later be known as the Wiseman's Committee. The secret pact they formed there marked the beginning of the philosophers. But the last of the original members died in the 1930s. After that, the organization began to run out of control and the Wiseman's Committee degenerated into a mere shell of its former self. The philosophers of today have no sense of good or evil. Their influence extends to countries and organizations involved in every aspect of every war. They have become war itself. That's how they operate. The sacrifices of war cause a shift in the times. This shift leads to renewed conflict and in turn triggers the next war. Like a nuclear chain reaction, each conflict sparks countless others, forming an endless spiral that will continue on for eternity. Do you understand what I'm saying, Snake? By consuming me and you, the philosophers intend to keep that cycle going forever. It was my father who explained all of this to me. He was one of them. You see, I am the last remaining child of the philosophers. But after he revealed the truth, my father was killed by that same shapeless, formless organization. And my father isn't the only thing the philosophers have taken from me. In June of 1944, the Cobras and I took part in the landing at Normandy. We'd been given a top-secret mission to locate and destroy enemy V-2 rocket installations. I was pregnant at the time. The sorrow was the father. I gave birth on the field of battle. A beautiful baby boy. But my child was snatched away from me by the philosophers. Look at this scar. This is proof that I was once a mother. I gave up my body and my child for my country. There is nothing left inside me now. Nothing at all. No hatred, not even regret. And yet sometimes at night, I can still feel the pain creeping up inside me, slithering through my body like a snake. I've never talked this much about myself before. Thanks. Thanks for listening to me. I feel content. Snake. Commence the operation. I raised you. 
I loved you. I've given you weapons, taught you techniques, endowed you with knowledge. There is nothing more for me to give you. All that's left for you to take is my life, by your own hand. One must die, and one must live. No victory, no defeat. The survivor will carry on the fight. It is our destiny. The one who survives will inherit the title of boss. And the one who inherits the title of boss will face an existence of endless battle. I'll give you 10 minutes. In 10 minutes, Migs will come and bomb the hell out of this place. If you can beat me in less than 10 minutes, you'll be able to escape in time. Let's make this the greatest 10 minutes of our lives, Jack. Boss. You're a soldier. Finish your mission. Prove your loyalty. Face me. Let's see what you're made of. <laughs> Where are you? yourself. made of. 
aquí.
ready to go, Snake? Are you okay? Snake? I told you you could trust me. Remember some of the basics of CQC. Picked up a few new moves. Huh. It doesn't feel right to shoot an unarmed man. But I'll get over it. Eva! What do you say to one last showdown? Yeah, all right.
What's your name? Snake. No. Not that name. You're not a snake, and I'm not an ocelot. We're men with names. My name is Adamska. What's yours? John. Very well, John. Plain name. But I won't forget it. Come on! It's a blank. <laughs> oh, that was fun. Till we meet again, John. Bulk 19, return to base immediately. 
Well done, Snake. The MiG's disengaged. Most likely under orders from Khrushchev. Is this his way of helping us? Who knows? Maybe he didn't want things to get messier than they already are. Or maybe he just wanted us to owe him one. The important thing is, you made it out alive. As long as Khrushchev is with us, I don't think they'll be coming after you. It should be smooth sailing all the way to Alaska. I'm sending someone out to Galena Base to meet you. To meet me? The DCI and the President himself are waiting at Langley. Don't keep them waiting. So what are you going to do now? Go back to the KGB? What do you want me to do? Do you ever think about coming back to America? I can't go back. I've left America behind me. But you saved this country. I didn't do it alone. And I still owe you a dinner. Is that part of your mission, too? Or is it an order? Or is it an invitation? Hmm. Or a proposal? I don't take orders from anyone now. Scholars tell us that the first spy in history was the snake in the book of Genesis. In that story, it was Eve who was tempted by the snake in the Garden of Eden. But 
This time around, it was I who tempted the snake and got away with the forbidden fruit of knowledge. Forgive me, snake. I wasn't sent by Khrushchev. I'm not a KGB spy, and I never worked for the NSA. I'm an agent of the People's Republic of China for the General HQ 2nd Department of the People's Liberation Army. It was all a lie. I tricked you. And I'm sorry. Philosophers still exist in China, too. You see, my mission was to find out where Volgan was hiding the philosopher's legacy and steal it. So I infiltrated his base as a KGB spy. The two NSA codebreakers who defected in 1960 were actually both men. The real Adam never showed up at the meeting place saving me the trouble of having to eliminate him. I sneaked in by pretending I was Eva. And you and Sokolov and Volgan, you all believed me. The philosopher's legacy was originally held in common between the US, Soviet Union, and China. We couldn't let the Russians and the Americans take it all for themselves. The Chinese government had its eye on the legacy too. I got the film containing the legacy. And also the nuclear missile launch data from the Shagohad. Five years ago, the Soviet Union stopped supplying us with nuclear weapons technology. Since then, China's Liandon easing hydrogen bomb and space rocket projects have fallen behind. But with this data, our country will be able to develop its own nukes. We'll create a deterrent force to rival those of the US and Soviet Union. Everything has gone according to plan thanks to your help. I too am one of the philosophers. I'm an agent of the philosophers, a graduate of one of their charm schools. I was raised in a joint US-Soviet-Chinese facility to become a sleeper agent. This was before the war. Back then, they were collecting children from all over the world. As a result, I'm indistinguishable from a native-born American. So it didn't surprise me when you and Volgan couldn't tell the difference. But she knew right from the beginning. She knew because before the war, she was at one of the philosopher's schools too, as an instructor. The boss was the only one I couldn't fool. She was the only one who knew I was a fake. She told me everything. Why did she open her heart to me like that? At the time, I, I couldn't understand it. But now, I think I do. Snake, she wanted you to know the truth. She chose me to tell you. That's why she saved my life. I've lied to you so many times, but not this time. My orders from the government were to obtain the legacy and to eliminate everyone who knew the truth about what happened. In other words, I'm supposed to kill you. But I can't do it. Not because we loved each other. 
And not because you saved my life. But because I made a promise to the boss. And I intend to keep it. I just wanted you to know. And... You have to live. Snake, listen to me. She didn't betray the United States. No. Far from it. She was a hero who died for her country. She carried out her mission knowing full well what was going to happen. Self-sacrifice. Because that was her duty. I award you the title of Big Boss. You are a true patriot. the qualities of a soldier and an agent. The boss's defection was a ruse set up by the U.S. government. It was all a big drama staged by Washington so they could get their hands on the philosopher's legacy. And the boss was the star of the show. They planned it so that they could get the legacy that Colonel Volgan inherited and destroy the Shagohat at the same time. Only a legendary hero like the boss could have earned Volgan's trust. Finding out where the Philosopher's legacy was hidden was to be her greatest mission. Everything was going according to plan. But then something happened that no one could have predicted. Colonel Volgan fired an American-made nuclear warhead at Sokolov's research facility. Khrushchev demanded that the U.S. government provide proof that it wasn't involved. They couldn't just abort the operation to steal the legacy. So the operation itself was greatly expanded and revised. The authorities in Washington knew that in order to prove its innocence, they'd have to get rid of the boss. And that one of their own would have to do the job. The public couldn't be allowed to find out about it. Not ever. This, they concluded, would be the best way to keep the whole thing under wraps. The boss wouldn't be allowed to come back home alive. And she wouldn't be allowed to kill herself. Her life would be ended by her most beloved disciple. That was the way the government wanted it. That was the mission she was given. And she had no choice but to carry it out. Her death in your hands was a duty she had to fulfill. Out of duty, she turned her back on her own conscience. A lesser woman would have been crushed by such a burden. The taint of disgrace will follow her to her grave. Future generations 
will revile her. In America as a despicable traitor with no sense of honor. And in Russia as a monster who unleashed a nuclear catastrophe. She will go down in official history as a war criminal. And no one will ever understand her. That was her final mission. And like a true soldier, she saw it through to the end. But I think she wanted you, of all people, to know the truth. She wanted to live on in your memory. Not as a soldier, but as a woman. But she was forbidden to tell you herself. That's why she told me. Snake. <laughs> History will never know what she did. No one will ever learn the truth. Her story, her debriefing, Her life and her honor for 